C Limited's comeback is continuing. The company recently reported their latest earnings report was a pretty good one. They did add a couple of extra metrics that, in my opinion, should have been added in the past, such as a GMV. It was there in the past, then they removed it. Now it's back. It's great. The more information we get as investors, the better it is. And if they are removing one metric, it better be because they are giving us a couple of extra metrics instead. Right now, the company is up 1.58% at the time of making this video. One share will cost you $67.31 has a market cap of $38.66 billion, year-to-date it's up 66%. If we're looking at the forward PE, it's currently at 27.8 times, EV to sales 2.3 times. If we look at the analyst estimates for fiscal year 24, 25, 26, some solid growth, especially at the bottom line, top line around 15, 14% or so year over year on average. If we look at the average analyst price target, it's currently at $72, representing around 7.5% upside from the price we're at today. And as you can see, the average price target did go up after they released their latest earnings report. Now we've been covering C Limited for a while, when it was low, when it was extremely high, and when it was low back again. Last quarter, we've talked about this comeback story, proving the doubters wrong, proving that they can grow in a profitable way was just a question of can they continue to do it. This quarter, in my opinion, they proved it, but there are still some things I want to mention. So before we do that, if you enjoy this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not. If you want to support me even further, do check out the link down in the description and in the pinned comment to get the top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to full.com forward slash couch investor. Thank you very much. So I'll first start off here with a couple of comments. I am pleased to share that we are kicking off 2024 with a strong quarter. All three businesses have delivered strong growth with an improved profit profile. Referring to the macro environment challenges in the past few years, going through this period has made us leaner, fitter and savvier. We are now much more confident of our ability to weather headwinds well and adapt quickly to changing environments. To be honest, respect to the management here because many other companies did not do what they did. They took the hit, they took the hit themselves, they switched it around and now they're actually delivering the goods. So kudos to them. On the e-commerce front, Shopee delivered strong growth this quarter, achieving its highest ever quarterly orders, GMV and revenue. The CEO pointed to Shopee's integrated logistics capability as a key differentiating factor of service quality, saying SPX Express has become one of the fastest and most extensive logistics operators in our markets today, greatly enhancing our customer experience. Talking about the digital financial segment, which is C-Money, so C-Money has continued its strong momentum and profitability into 2024 while maintaining prudent risk management. As they healthily grow their user base, they will be able to offer a broader set of financial services to meet their users' needs in the future. With regards to the digital entertainment side, Garena, so we are pleased to share that Garena is back to positive growth led by Free Fire's strong performance across markets. In its seventh year, Free Fire is still one of the largest mobile games in the world by user scale and remains highly effective in attracting new users. We are confident of building Free Fire into an evergreen franchise. To conclude, we have a clear roadmap for profitable growth. Our results in the first quarter have given us a strong start to 2024 and we are well on track to deliver our full year guidance, which is around, I believe, 14% growth year over year. Now, for this quarter, revenue increased around 22.8%. The only issue I would say here, one of the only issues I would say here is one, the cost of goods sold increased 47.6% year over year. And so cost of revenue is up 34.2% year over year, which is not great. If we look at gross profit, that has increased 9.7% year over year. Then looking at total operating expenses has only increased 14.8% year over year. So total OPEX increased 14.8% year over year. Revenue increased 22.8%. So that's fine. But when you look at the huge increase here, sales and marketing expense increased 92.3%. So this was the question in the past. Can they grow without having to spend so much? And then, of course, taking all of that into consideration, you then get operating income that is down 43.2%. And then so net income is down 126.3% year over year. It's now a loss compared to a net income positive quarter, same quarter last year. Moving on to the different segments of the business. First up, Shopee. So now we have here GMV and gross orders. GMV is now at $23.6 billion. Gross order 2.6, which is up slightly quarter over quarter, but... 
year over year were up by quite a lot. If we look at gap revenue and take rate, take rate has reaccelerated quarter over quarter. So that's nice to see. Then looking at adjusted EBITDA, we're seeing some major improvements here quarter over quarter. Still negative, adjusted EBITDA as a percentage of GMV is close to bring break even. Moving on to C money, gap revenue and adjusted EBITDA continues to grow year over year. And quarter over quarter and gap revenue, we're seeing some growth there as well. Adjusted EBITDA basically flat. As for loans principal outstanding and NPL over 90 days ratio, you're here still at 1.4%. So we're seeing that stabilizing. With regards to Garena or digital entertainment segment of the business, we are now finally seeing here a reacceleration. So adjusted EBITDA as a percentage of bookings has reaccelerated year over year and quarter over quarter. Bookings is up. Gap revenue is down slightly quarter over quarter, year over year as well. Adjusted EBITDA is up quarter over quarter and year over year. And continuing here on a positive note, quarterly paying user ratio is up quarter over quarter. Finally, quarterly active users is up as well, but ARPU is still down quarter over quarter and year over year. And so right now, looking at this stock here, we know it had a good start of the year, up 66% year to date. Now, because it has gone up quite a lot, let's say in the last couple of weeks or so, the stock is close to being overbought. It is still above the 2050 and the 200 day moving average. As you can see here, we've had quite some momentum with regards to the stock. The 200 day moving average sits at $52, the 51 at 57 and the 20 day one at 62, which is a place we have rebounded over in the last couple of days. And so to conclude, the most important part that investors should notice is that there is continued execution. It's not a one-off quarter where suddenly they see some reacceleration when suddenly some segments of the business are doing better, but then the next quarter, it's again negative, things are going to the wrong direction. No, management here took this very, very seriously a couple of quarters ago. They completely flipped the switch. It is now working for them. But as always, we need to see continued execution because as you've seen, yes, they're spending quite a lot on sales and marketing. Can they continue to grow without all of that spending? I'm not saying they shouldn't spend because if they're seeing some momentum, then of course they should continue to, let's say, pour oil on the fire, in this case, in a positive way. And so let's wait and see in the next quarter. Right now, investors should be happy, not just because of the performance of the stock year to date, but because of the performance, especially from the business year to date. That's about it for me in this video. If you enjoyed this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, do share your thoughts down in the comment section below and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.